Hey guys, what's happening? So, the other day I picked this up on uh, OfferUp. Got an incredible deal, but I'm always on the lookout for mini ITX motherboards that actually have dual NICs, dual network cards. And you kind of, you want that for like a firewall build. Uh, it definitely makes it easier. You don't have to buy an additional card. It actually usually runs better too. Uh, sometimes you might have a, a shared chipset, but it's typically what I, I like to actually have it on board. That way it doesn't have to leave the PCI bus. It's actually on the uh, internal traces of the motherboard. But uh, yeah, take a look at this thing. So I bought two of them. I'll show you my other one. And uh, But let me show you uh, some of the features of this thing. So for me, I actually liked it too because it had mSATA. So I actually do have a couple mSATA drives from old computers that I'm going to use in this. And that is 128 gigger. So it's going to be ultra low power consumption. Um, yeah, this is incredible. It even came with a low profile fan too, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, so it's a Core i3 and it also came with uh, 8 gig of RAM. So I got both of them for 60 bucks. Um, so my other one is currently running in my mining rig. I just actually upgraded that yesterday. Um, single PCA, I'm not going to be using this. I mean, this would be good for like a single crypto miner or it could be anything, but just be yeah, the main thing is like I said, the dual NIC. Dual network interface card. So it's actually not even like a name brand. It's called Jetway. That's the part number. Um, so this was actually was designed more for like an industrial type PC. Like uh, it really wasn't sold really to the consumer market so much it looks like like this might have been some sort of I'm not sure what it is but I mean there's definitely some features that don't look like your typical gaming motherboard like different expansion uh, card slots here a lot of different random stuff um, but okay I'm gonna get this on my little test rig here and we'll fire it up and so this would be a perfect build for uh, uh, like OpenSense, PFSense for me, I'm going to be putting a Sophos XG on it. Uh, but before I do, let me show you what I got going over here, too. I'm currently running a mini ITX motherboard, that little black box right there. And I'm actually running Sophos XG on there. And above that is a Cisco switch. And then down here is the Crypto Miner that I did this yesterday. Put that motherboard on yesterday. So, so far, so good. I mean, working good. But uh, yeah, I mean, just by having the actual M SATA drive, you might save like four to five watts. Um, it definitely has a very low, much lower power consuming uh, device than like a 2.5 inch uh, SSC drive. I mean, we're talking a couple watts, not a lot, but you know, in California, with the power bills here, it's a couple watts is a ten dollars a month. Right, so this is my 3D printed uh, mini ITX uh, case. I originally had designed this for uh, 3D printing. Or not 3D printing, but uh, crypto mining, CPU mining. You know, with the power supply underneath. Um, you know, be able to test some GPUs. Um, look at that on top. You know, four pin power like that. I'm not gonna not gonna screw it down because it's gonna actually go into my firewall box. And uh, all right, let me get plugged in. We'll get the software installed. All right, so I don't know if this thing's gonna work or not. Got it plugged in. Fired up. So, all right, I've plugged into one of my test monitors here. Yep, cool. Except I already have software on this machine. Okay, so it's good. Okay, so when you're building a firewall, um, one of the things you want to do is I want to make sure that we. Uh, Um, power. So what happens is in case the power goes out, the signal power back on by itself. It's called like power off, a restore, or where it's at, but I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, because you want this thing in case the power goes out, the power back on. Um, so Core i3. Okay, I'm gonna. I can't. Before I even do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and I don't know what was on here. I'm gonna do. Uh, uh, what's it called? Optimize defaults. Yes. Um, but I want to change that to HCI. Okay. And where is the. Okay, here it is. Restore AC power off. 
power on. That way it powers back on when the power comes back on. Um, oh yeah, then I also want to go to... It's a little bit different. Every single motherboard is different. But I want to change the option to uh, UEFI. Okay, UEFI. That's good. That is what I want. Okay. Um, I want a UEFI only. Okay. All right. It should be F7. I've already since I already installed the other board, motherboard, the BIOS commands on this motherboard are a little bit different. Um. I know file system grab. All right. So I have to come back. I maybe I flashed the wrong master boot record on my uh, my flash drive here. All right. I'm not sure if I had a bad flash drive or what it is, but. Booting now, and uh, yes, it's 120 gig, uh, uh, 100 M SATA drive. So, yeah, just gonna go through, format automatically, and it's gonna reboot. And I should be able to configure it. I'm actually, since I'm not doing a, a, new, a new installation, I'm just gonna restore backup. So, it should be uh, pretty fast for me. All right, so I'm in the process of restoring my configuration, interconnection, continue offline because my firewall's currently working and I can't actually have the same IP addresses. So I can't actually uh, switch over the internet yet because I want to make sure it works before I shut down my internet. All right, looks like everything restored correctly. What kind of sucks is I actually have to take down my firewall, which is my internet, and my crypto will go down too, my miners. So, I'll try to make this as fast as possible. Alright, so here is the uh, firewall. So, I think this was a second generation? I, I can't remember. I, I did this years ago. Um, but this at one point had been my, my main computer motherboard. Uh, I believe it's a gigabyte motherboard. Dual NIC. So, which, what, what I didn't like about this motherboard was that one of the NICs was Intel and the other one was Realtek, so I don't think it's ever a good idea to mix different NICs. You know, I think you lose performance. So I take the case cover off and uh, pop out the motherboard fast. Right, so here is the current setup. So I'm just going to take off this plate. Actually, I'm probably just going to keep this plate out here, possibly if I can. Maybe I can't. Can't remember. If it has a USB in it or not? Oh, that's screw. Okay. Well, I guess I keep it. Keep it in. All right. So I got the motherboard out. I can't remember what generation this was. Hmm. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna go down. So at one point, I was trying to actually make a uh, a wireless access point out of this. So I actually had an Ethereum chip on there, but uh, I just had to buy a, a real access point that worked with Sophos, a Sophos branded uh, firewall. Can't remember memory I had in there. All right, so pop this motherboard in. All right, so this actually runs off one of these. Uh, it's a 12 volt input, and it's like a little converter, but it's Right here on the HX connector. Gotta put that around. Good like that. Alright, and the power connector, CPU power connector. Alright, then I gotta hit the. Can't do this one hand, but I'm gonna put the power and uh, LED. Alright, well, at least with the SSD, I'm gonna be getting better airflow. Or SSD removed, I'll be getting better airflow. Now, this is a really cool case, it's all aluminum. Um, I can't remember, I think it was like it was pretty expensive, like a hundred bucks, I think. I made a review about it years ago. Yeah, definitely nice, very nice case. Alright, so my home user setup is pretty basic. I got a 48 port Cisco PoE switch, the Sophos firewall, and the cable modem. But at my data center, it's way more complex. Multiple firewalls, I have web servers for web server, exchange server. Uh, but really I don't have anything to protect at home, so. Definitely very mild here. I forgot, I have two access points. That's a 2.4 gig access point, and then I have a five gig inside the house. One last thing I forgot to do. Uh, anytime you actually change the firewall, the MAC address of the WAN interface on any device on a cable modem, you have to reset the modem because it binds to the MAC address. All right, looks like I picked up a public IP address once I reset the cable modem, and I'm pinging Google. So, pretty quick, pretty easy. So I'm gonna keep that for a couple days, you know, not mess with this in case I gotta go back, like if it crashes or something. But uh, now I'm gonna repurpose this. I'm gonna put it on here, and I'm gonna make this a crypto miner tester.
just in case I get a, a failed GPU reset that I can test it. But, alright guys, pretty easy. Awesome.